Good morning, it's Thursday the 31st of August 2017, five past ten in the morning. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk, as always boys and girls, filled with homophobia, racism and everything, everything that you could possibly think that is offensive today, I'm going to do. I'm even going to be offensive to this inoffensive orchid later on. Keep watching to find out what I'm going to do to that. <laughs> Actually, I got that from Gustav, who sent in a very quick message this morning, who says, oh, my God, I can't wait for an hour show filled with hate, racism, sexism and homophobia, the gayest thing on the Internet. If you're wondering where all that's coming from, um, you may not have seen the emergency broadcast that I had to make last night after what was an excellent quiz in there last night. Um, <clears throat> I host a quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Uh, it's a lovely night. It really is. It's so easy going and we have a little bit of a laugh. We started off with nine teams last night, which, which is good. Nine teams is good. We ended up with five, but that happens sometimes. You know, some people, they're playing and unfortunately, they're a little bit too thick. Some people are, fu there we are, insulting the unintelligent. Did you see how I've started? I've started. Some people are a little bit too thick, so they have to leave early. No, generally what happens is that some people have come in for a dinner, or they're about to go out for a dinner, so they come in for a little drink before dinner or something like that, or to go and watch the um, uh, wonderful performances that they do in the theatre next door. And they start the quiz... And then, oh, well, we've got to go now. And, and then they go. So, But five teams. We're left with five teams. Uh, Ray Reynolds, very good friend. This programme was there last night. Now, they've won a few times. Last night? Last. Last. What happened there, boys? Have you become thick as well? I must say, you were looking very thick last night. I bet I know what you were doing. I bet you were overanalyzing the questions. That's always a mistake. Always a mistake. You know, what is small, white, and is hit by two bats over a table? Oh, it's a ping pong ball. Ah, oh, yeah, but he said, what sort of table is it? That's the thing. We need to find out what sort of table is it. But they can't, you see. They can't because they're not allowed to ask questions about the questions. Because that's the sort of thing you get. On, I, I, lie, I kid you not, that's the sort of thing you get. If you allow questions about the questions, that's the sort of thing you'd get is, oh, oh, you said it was two bats and a small white ball on a table. Can you tell us how big the table was? No, I can't. That wasn't the question. <clears throat> you do. <laughs> you seriously get questions like that. So that's why there's no questions about the questions. I reckon they were overanalyzing it last night. They came last. They won a bag of crisps. Oh, and it weren't as easy as that, was it? Oh, uh, uh, what flavours have you got? And they, they can't just say cheese and onion or plain. They want the list of flavours that the people I told you about who go into McDonald's yesterday, didn't I? Told you about that? These people, they're in there every day, every day, morning, noon and night. They go in and they walk there and they stand and look at the menu for an hour <clears throat> with the queue building up behind them. And then they all do the same thing they had last time. Same sort of thing. So a lovely quiz last night. But unfortunately, there was another complaint, boys and girls. As you may have seen on the emergency broadcast, you may remember about two or three weeks ago, I got a complaint that I was too gay. I was doing the quiz too gay. I was putting it on. Of course I'm putting it on. It's a bloody show, dear. It's like what you go and see in the theatre. When you see the people on stage like um, Sir, Sir Ian McKellen. Sir Ian McKellen. When you see him in Harry Potter, do you think he's like that in real life? <clears throat> do you think he dresses up in the wizard outfits and grows great big long beards and walks along, uh, uh, around Islington looking like that? No, dear. No, it's a show. It's a show. And like me, I am doing a show. Apparently, I was too gay the other week. Last night's complaint, even better. Not by one of the quiz players, but by one of the theatre goers who, um, who, who says... I am homophobic. I am very... <laughs> you can see it doesn't bother me, do you? I, I just see the total and utter stupidity of more and more people in this world. And it's getting worse. You know it's getting worse. You see them on the television. 
little groups of people. You know, you, you get one leader usually. You get one leader and then all the little friends gather around them, dear. Like clubs. It's as if they, they don't belong to anything and they feel they need to belong to something. <clears throat> so they find someone who's a bit outspoken. Could be me. Because you're part of my gang, aren't you? Could be me. They find someone and start following them. Perhaps that's how it worked for Jesus. Perhaps he was because he was a little bit outspoken, he got followers. Is that the way to do it? Do I need to grow longer hair and perhaps wear old shabby clothes like Jesus did? I might have more followers then. I could have a book written about me. The Bible. But that's the complaint last night that I'm homophobic. And <coughs> at the end of the night, I did, of course, inform all the teams what had happened, who, who, who were just totally wetting themselves with laughter. And one of them said, I, I wonder what it was that made him think that. And the only thing we could come up with was, near the beginning of the night, I said, and tonight's quiz is going to be very straight acting. Of course, using that as a term for the complaint a couple of weeks ago. So if you're in the, in, in the zone, so to speak, you would get that. But if you weren't, if you didn't know about the other complaint, you wouldn't get that. But it, it just bemuses me who, how, how people who know nothing about what's going on feel the need to open their mouths. On the other side, the way I sit here and talk about so-called non-celebrities with no talent, only wears Essex, Make or Break, Love Island, all those programmes, non-talentless -tal people on the telly, the way I talk about them, it's perhaps it's a similar thing, you see. Because you're up there doing an entertainment thing, you are there to be criticised. I suppose it's a bit like that, really. But I, I don't mind being criticised with, with, with good reason. That doesn't bother me at all. I just close my ears and carry on doing what I'm doing. You don't think like people like, uh, I don't know, <clears throat> uh, uh, Rod Stewart. You don't for one moment assume that everyone likes what Rod Stewart does. I'm sure he probably gets the odd email of complaint. Oh, you did this, you did that. Do you think he changes what he does because of that one little email? I bet he doesn't. And I won't either. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> So that was the quiz last night. Let's say hello to some early adopters this morning. Good morning to lovely Craig Hard. Good morning. It says time for Chris. Yeah, 10 o'clock um, sort of I reckon the average sort of time I'm here now, isn't it? It's usually around 10 o'clock in the morning, although we, it's not scheduled for 10 o'clock. It's kind of around 10 o'clock, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> Diane's here. Good morning, Diane. Gavin Matthews. Good morning, Gavin. Uh, Tim Thomas, good morning, Tim, who says, good morning, Chris, still a bit grey outside, but I live in hope. Enjoy your day. Oh, have another injection of some sort then, Tim. That'll make you brighten up. It looks very nice out there today. The sun is beaming down here in Royal Berkshire. Yes. Good morning to Dino. And uh, Tim says, I love the Linda Gray clip. See, we do watch the no, credits. Oh, thing, Tim. just a moment. Why have, I, why have I got that? That shouldn't be on there like that. One moment, please. Let's click one of those likes and that'll get rid of that. Lovely. Yes. So, uh, just a minute. Yes, the Linda Gray clip. That, that's a couple of years ago, that is now. Um, I stalked her outside Wimbledon Theatre. I went to see her play Cinderella. <clears throat> Cinderella at Wim Wimbledon Theatre. And I went around the back afterwards to, to say hello to her because she's like a big, to me, massive big star. Huge in the 70s. She would not have been able to come out the side door and talk to people in the 1970s. There would have been thousands there. This time, just eight. <laughs> well, it's eight. There's no one waiting outside my house for when I finish my, my, my show this morning. <clears throat> you know, I'm lucky if now and again one of the plants sort of bows to me as I go out. But that's about it. <laughs> Morning, uh, Rod Brown. Hello, Rod. Tim says, don't hurt the orchid. I'm not going to hurt the orchid, darling. Don't worry about that little white orchid there. This is a white orchid, therefore it is racist. This is a racist orchid because it's white. I'm surprised no one's complained about that. No one has mentioned, where's the black one? Where's the black orchid? Oh, that's really racist. You've only got a white orchid in your house. I'm waiting for that one next. Come on. Come on, fire them in. Fire your insults in this morning. It's a good woman. Good morning, Barbie Leets, who joins us this morning. Um... 
Gustav says that Ian McKellen wasn't in Harry Potter. No, wasn't he? Who played Dumbledore then? Who was that? Who played Dumbledore in Harry Potter? Someone tell me. Um, uh, let me have a... Did, did Chris liken himself to Ian McKellen, but also Jesus Christ? I'm offended. You'd be offended as much as you want, darling, OK? Send in as many emails as you want. And talking of emails... Um, I was sent this a couple of days ago, which I, I have I have overlooked, overlooked. And it's actually from one of the uh, quiz participants from Peter, who does a little show on Hospital Radio Basildon. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. It's Hospital Radio Basildon playing your hits ba -ba -ba. to the people in bed. Yes. Who writes? Hi, Chris. Just watched Sunday's show. And heard the bit about the radio DJ who was a bit posh, who gave champagne and chocolates and roses to his guests. Do you remember this story the other day? The presenter in question is Gerald Harper, the actor who presented a show on Capital Radio in the late 1970s. But it was so popular that the BBC, we bow down in their glorious name, the BBC took him on early in the 90s, and he did a very similar show on Radio 2. BBC Radio 2, 88 to 91 FM. Radio 2 from the BBC. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Love that jingle. Can't remember if it was a weekend show, Saturday, or a weekday show. I think it was the weekend because he would have been in the theatre quite a bit. As an actor, you might know him as Adam Adamant. Or as Hadley. No, that's not ringing a bell to me at all, I'm afraid, Peter. So uh, that's that's who we, we couldn't think who it was. And someone asked me, did I know who this person was? And, and I certainly didn't, I'm afraid. So no. Uh, uh, Wizzo also says, on the subject of Bruce Forsyth's death, it was a strange coincidence that Bruce's cousin, cousin Alan Johnson, died just two days after Bruce. He was 87 and had been ill for some time. Alan appeared with Bruce on the Who Do You Think You Are show that Bruce did. All being well, I'll see you at the quiz on Wednesday, as indeed he was. So thank you very much for uh, clearing that one up, Peter. <clears throat> now we know who they are. I can't remember. It was someone on here who um, who said that they uh, they remembered this DJ, and I, I, couldn't, I didn't know who it was. I still don't, to be honest. I don't remember that person. Perhaps I wasn't uh, listening to that one. OK. Uh, morning to Shania. Shania joins us as well this morning. From the Isle of Wight, morning dear. There's a phone line open if you want to call in at some point this morning. It's 020 8144 Okay? 020 8144 Or you can Skype in if you've got Skype wherever you are in the world. Free phone calls. Skype me on, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. Skype in, United Kingdom Talk. And phone in, 020 8144 Double seven. Now, we've got some uh, news stories this morning. I love this one. I mean, would you do this for £500? For £500 in today's Metro, Beekeeper sits on Hive for a £500 bet. <clears throat> and it looks like he's taken his pants down as well. Oh, my God. A beekeeper has insisted that no bees were harmed during the making of this video sitting on their hives. Jamie... Uh, Granger was challenged to sit on the hive with a bare backside for £550. He's in New Zealand. It's about $1,000 over there. Another colleague had fouled the 30-second challenge, managing just 19 seconds sitting on the swarm. Why would you do this? <laughs> Jamie dropped his trousers on the farm in rural Matama after being goaded by a friend, uh, Ariel. Jamie Granger from New Zealand said, was it painful? Well, just, it was, just as you can imagine. It wasn't pleasant, but it certainly was amusing. As you can imagine, your bum swells up. I should think it does. <clears throat> I'd be biting your bum if you sat on my face, darling. God's sake. It was just a spare of the moment thing, and he offered me a thousand bucks. It was like, well, a thousand bucks, that sounds good. When my partner Lauren found out, we both had a bit of a laugh, and she found out I got a thousand bucks, she said to me, well, that could pay for the wedding. <laughs> oh, dear, dear me. Naturally, when bees sting the, the you, bing you, the, naturally, when bees sting you, they die. 
but it's near the end of the season, so a lot die off anyway. So they've got nothing to lose. Why would you do that? Sit on a bee's nest. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Have you ever done anything like that? For money or charity? God, I, I just... <clears throat> the things some people do... That I remember... Um, what was the programme... Um, it was, it was a, the pain, the pain men or something like that. I think it was on Channel 4 and there were various different scenes. I can't remember what it was. And there were these two blokes who were the pain men. And they used to do things, both of them, um, to cause pain. And one of the things I never forget they doing was to bend over and to have someone literally throw darts at their bare backsides. Do you remember that one? And they did various other strange things like that, like setting fire to their hair and that sort of thing. Do you remember the pain, man? I can't remember what that um, uh, what that one was. <laughs> dear, dear me. Ashley says, I'd push Chris into a beehive for £500. Would you really? I do hope not. <laughs> ah, John says, Dumbledore was Richard Harris for the t first two films. Then it was David Gambon for the rest. Did you know Dumbledore is gay? No, I didn't. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I've got the wrong man in the wrong film there. Uh, and I think uh, someone's else sent a message about Dumbledore. I've got I've got completely the wrong actor there, haven't I? So apologies. Uh, Sir Ian McKellen was Lord in the Rings. He played Gandalf. Sorry, Lord of the Rings then. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. But that was the same sort of thing, wasn't it? With the long beard and, and the, the kind of outfit there uh, that he wore. <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, you don't see Ian McKellen walking around like that in Islington, do you? You know, it is a show. The same as when I'm doing a quiz, I'm doing a show. It's a show. A lot of things are a show. It's like um, uh, the the lovely Linda at Slimming World, where I go to Slimming World. Now, for that for that one and a half hours that we're there, and she's standing in front of us doing a little chat, and she's helping us all lose weight. But at the end of the day, it's a show. You know, she's like projecting what she thinks we should be seeing. Uh, you know, when she goes home, I don't suppose she's like that all the time, you know, perfect hair and lovely makeup. And I don't suppose, I mean, my niece, you want to see my niece, niece out of makeup? Oh, dear. Sometimes I FaceTime her and she's she's got no makeup on because my niece, she's a hairdresser. She's got her own hairdressers <clears throat> in uh, Woodhall Spa, where I'm going next week to, for, for a few days. I've got, got my caravan Got my caravan instructions here, my terms and conditions. Because I'm staying at a different caravan place this time. But she's got her hairdressers up there. And when I FaceTime her, when she's not at work, she's got no makeup. She looks completely and utterly different. It's a show. So when my niece goes, when my niece goes and cuts people hair, you know, she has given them a show. They they don't want to see some some poor old haggard young lady, you know, with no makeup. Hair all over the place, walking around in a dressing gown like she does at home. I see that because I'm her uncle. But the other, the people in the shop would never see that. It's all a show. Life is a blooming show, isn't it? <clears throat> Life is a show. At church, when you sit there at church, the priest comes in, the altar boys, they're carrying across, they sit down in the same place. Everything happens in roughly the same time. The little bell rings when he holds the host up, the hymns play. But it's a show. It's, it's basically a show, and I like going to see that show. Do you see what I mean? Everything's a show. This is a show. I'm not like this all the time. As soon as I come off here, right, I switch off, I go woof, down, straight down. Not depressed, just down. At the moment, I'm hyper, 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 with the help of cups of tea. And Dr. Mike at the Royal Free and his chemicals that keep me alive. <laughs> Dear, dear me. Um, <coughs> good morning to Jason Darcy. Morning, Jason. Ray Belesco. Hello, Ray. Ray is head of bread and cakes at Morrison's in Queensbury, aren't you, Ray? Always bring no more cakes, please, Ray, because I'm on the Slimmers world. If you bring in cakes, then I will gratefully receive them, but also gratefully pass them on to other people. I could always distribute them, couldn't I? Going back to church again. Going back to church again. If you bought me in six cakes... And there were 20 people, what would I do? 
I'm a Catholic, so I would simply bless the cakes and then they would double in size and I could give one to everyone, possibly with some fish and some bread as well. It's the parables. It's the parables that I love. <laughs> Morning, Ray. Morning to Roger James. Morning, Roger. I hope you're well. Uh, what a man. You're relentless. We've got to be relentless, Roger. We must carry on surging through this complete and utter mess of idiots that are multiplying as we sit here and speak to each other. Idiots. <clears throat> Idiots with no sense of humour and no understanding. Dear me. There's more and more of them around. The permanently offended. Please, if you're permanently offended, dig yourself a nice grave, go and lie there and cover it up. Don't want to hear you. And if I do hear you, I switch off my ears and walk off. Not interested. Uh, good morning to John Paul O'Hara. Morning. Dumbledore was Richard Harris. Oh, I read that, haven't I? Thank you, John. Uh, are you, is that John, are you John who does the children's parties? I think you are, aren't you? From Ealing? Is it from Ealing? I know you are. I haven't seen you for ages and ages. Yes, it is you. You do the, like, the children's parties. Do you still do those? Very good at those, aren't you? Uh, Gustav says, you have a Christian cross on the wall, but no Star of David. This is an anti cinemic programme. <laughs> do we need them all up there? We need the, um, the Star of David, the, uh, Crescent. Is it the Muslim crescent? Uh, what do the Buddhists tell? Oh, I haven't got room for Buddha, have I? Because they're quite big. I've got my sister sitting in the corner. <laughs> oh, don't tell her that, for God. Oh, I hope she don't see this now. I wish I hadn't said that now. Sometimes, occasionally, <clears throat> occasionally, I do say things and I wish I hadn't said them. But it's too late. The horse has bolted. I think Theresa May might feel like that when they read out their last Conservative manifesto. I think there was a couple of bits in there that they wished they hadn't read out and kept quiet. If they had, she would have got back in with massive majorities. There's no majority in this house. I'm just the one. Used to be me and the cat. Even she's left. Gone up to heaven. Oh, dear me. Uh, <coughs> why would you push me in a BI for £500, Ashley? That's not nice, is it, eh? Dear me. <laughs> Michael Gambony. Gambon. Is it Michael Gambon? Michael G I don't know who these people are, dear. Right. Well, what else have we got here today? Let's have a look. Um, I was talking to a very good friend of mine uh, uh, on the on the messaging thing this morning, James Dean. And um, I've had this conversation. I have this conversation with so many people all the time. Oh, Rory's calling. Let's have a let's take a phone call. Let's go to oh, which fader are you on? Are you on that one, Rory? I am indeed, oh, Chris. Gotcha. I, I Go just thought I'd ring and tell you that I, I, I can't watch the broadcast live at the moment, so I don't know what's being spoken about, but I just wanted to contribute um, to whatever was being spoken about, really. What, why um, why are you not? Why can't you watch it live? Is there some, some problem with your equipment, dear? <clears throat> I, I think so. It's some kind of thing which is... Uh, it's to do with... Um, 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 I, 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 all of my safari is up to date. Oh, well, ju just a moment, please. Just a moment, please. I'll need to put you through to another department. Could you hold? Uh, 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 Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> Good afternoon, United Kingdom Talk. Technical support. How may I help you? Hello, technical support. So, so sorry to interrupt the show without knowing what you're talking about, but I'd like... I'd like some, some assistance with my safari update, please. Your safari update. One moment, I'll put you through to the residence department. Good afternoon. United Kingdom Talk, technical support, safari department. Can I help you? Woo! Boom, 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 boom. Woo! Boom, 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 boom. Yes, we're coming to you from a safari now in Nairobi. Woo! Boom, 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 boom. Why Very do you want funny. to go on a safari anyway? What, what, what am I doing on a safari? Yes. I'm chasing kangaroos. I'm I'm in my favourite place, which is Miami Beach. I'm going ba -ba 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 I have to correct you there. You don't get kangaroos on a safari, do you? Not well, kangaroos. No, I, I, no, no I, 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 I'm, I'm totally off track from what, from what <laughs> I was saying, funnily enough. <laughs> it's lions, tigers, giraffes. Oh, those beautiful giraffes. Just how? Just think how easy it would be, right, if giraffes could clean your windows. Well, they could with their tongues. Oh, oh, oh. It would be yes. so much easier if you could employ a giraffe to clean your windows, don't you think? 
Uh, I would be, but he'd be a pain in the neck. <laughs> very good, a pain in the neck. Very good, Rory. Very um, good. <laughs> so, 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 what are we discussing on the show this, show, the show, the show this, this morning? Well, I tell you what, I was just about to talk about was yeah. monthly out. I was just going to talk about a bit of radio first. Yeah. Um, oh, of course, you do. You still do the hospital radio? Yes, yeah. Yes, uh, what I was funny enough, I was talking to one of the bar staff last night in the King's Head Theatre Bar. Uh, Jamie is a nice lad. I didn't know he yeah. did hospital radio at UC, UCW. Is it UCW? Is it Radio CW? No, what's the hospital in London? University what? College. Oh, um, UCH. I've, I've heard of that. UCH. College. Yeah, he does a radio sta He does a little radio station uh, show on hospital radio um, uh, UCH. And I was saying to him <clears throat> last night. He said he had an interview at Capital Radio. Yeah. And uh, he said he think it went quite well. And mm. I, I, I said, have you ever thought about internet radio or you know community radio or something like that? Uh, and I said to him, I think you'll find if you get the job at Cap, if you get a job at Capital Radio, I think you'll be very disheartened very quickly because, you know, these these big um, ILRs, the independent local radio stations like Capital, like Heart, like um, uh, Kiss, all those, they have formats, you know, <clears throat> and they'll be playing a tune and a light will come on for 10 seconds. 15 mm. seconds, whatever. You you talk for that 15 seconds. You've got yeah. to say the station name at the beginning or within the link somewhere every single time. And it's all very formatted. And you can't yeah. be yourself, Rory. You can't. I've you heard can't. that. The, the, uh, the nearest thing to hospital radio, when you actually learn how to, to do hospital radio as opposed to um, rave radio or kiss radio, but the, <laughs> the, the radio format for hospital radio is replicated on Radio 2 and smooth yes so so really yeah. I, I i and I, I and he said to me he said to be quite honest you see i think i'm more bbc and there i know you have a little bit more of a free reign there of course there are yeah. rules to stick to but um when when um uh, i spoke to perhaps i shan't name him I spoke to a very famous uh, radio person uh, some months ago now, and he said exactly the same. He said, that's why I prefer the BBC, because they let you be yourself. You know, right. you can drive up and down the country, quite frankly, and listen to any independent local radio station, whether it's Capital or, uh, I don't know, Lynx FM, any of those. And, well, mm. it, it could be the same person on every station because they go to this radio school. They yeah. go to a radio school and they're told, you know, keep it 15 seconds. Now, the conversation I was having with my friend this morning, uh, James Dean, now he runs a little community station yeah. in um, uh, up at Manchester Way. And... Um, we were saying exactly the same thing, you know, that you, you've got the talent and there's, there's there's an enormous amount of talent out there. People who do internet radio shows, OK, but they can't yeah. get on the main radio shows because almost they've got too much talent for the radio station to cope with. They don't right. want them to be themselves. And it's such a shame. And we what we don't seem to be able to do is find a way... And he says, you know, we can't find a way to make money with these talented people. And I said, to be fair, now, you know, I'm not keen on money, men. I'm not mm. keen on on people who are so desperate to squeeze every last possible penny they possibly can, you know, and, and do anything to do it. It has to be said that the money men who make radio stations make money do their mm. job. They can do their job and they can make radio stations make an awful lot of money. And um, in this group of people, I would include program controllers because they know that they've got to make money. They know what they can put on the radio to make a lot of money. And that is like just just constant music, constant right. music. I would love to see <clears throat> and uh, the BBC has that, but it's a little bit. Um, 
t- it's a little bit as a closed shop, I think, the BBC. Yeah, I always that... think it, because I do a show at the hospital called Music, which is a combination of news and music, yeah. hence, the word, hence the word music. And also I do a, one from home, a bit, a bit like United Kingdom Dog, but it's called Music Comment. And part of the, the skill is balancing the two, a bit of, bit of music, a bit of news and so on, but never... Never, never too much of the same. I mean, I mean, some, some, um, some uh, radio stations have the jingle, um, more music, le- less talk. But oh. I think it depends on what they're what they're after, really. Yeah. I, so, what's the point? What's the point of having anyone presenting it? Just shove on a load of CDs and let the machine get on with it. If you re- if you don't want presenters, don't have them. But what I, I object to doing is sitting in the car listening to robots. Robots. Mm. Um, I, I quite like classic FM now. <clears throat> Yeah, and there's this lady on there at night time, Katie Braithwick, I think her name is Katie something or other. I think it's Braithwick, and uh, I'm sure she's a nice enough girl, but she's just so boring. She says the same thing, and she keeps using the word gorgeous. I heard in one link now for the, uh, a link is the bit between the tunes, yeah, <clears throat> just to explain to other people. So you play a record, there's a link that is someone talking, and then the next record comes on. Right. Or as the youngsters say, they don't they don't say records now. They say songs. OK, song. Next song comes on. And in one link, she said the word gorgeous three times. What a gorgeous piece of music. That really is such a gorgeous song. And we've got another gorgeous song coming up for you in a moment. And oh, for God's sake, woman, dear yeah. me, she's so boring. Yeah, I found that when we trained hospital radio, we trained with uh, Anthony Davis, who works at Smooth Radio. Who oh, was yeah. Manager, great right? man. Great, great. Very good manager. And he actually was saying that a lot of people, in, probably including me, to be honest, uh, uh, presenters sort of, sort of sort of use crutches to, to uh, you know, you know, phrases or sayings they come back to, which are their sort of comfort zones. And it sounds like hers is gorgeous. Yeah, well, it must be. It, it sounds like it is. We've heard yeah, it. Absolutely. <laughs> but it is a shame, you know, that we can't have a uh, radio station full of personalities. And I hate to say it. And, and, and this is an art. This is this is a bit old fashioned as it used to be because it did. It used to be that you could listen to the radio and be entertained by the greats of like Kenny Everett. <clears throat> yes. Da- oh, uh, I remember Kenny Everett, Captain Greneman. Yeah, it? that's right. Uh, he was Ed, the... Ed Stupot, Ed Stupot, Junior Choice, all those people. And um, so I'm having this conversation with James, and we 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 um, we said exactly the same thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, what would be your just just quickly? What would be your ideal programming list for your day in presenters? Do you know? I I don't know in which order. Probably the bre- uh, I I don't listen to breakfast shows. I can't stand the way they have a man and a woman generally doing a breakfast show. I mean, there you go. Homophobic radio stations. I haven't heard two gays doing it. <laughs> Unless you're on a gay radio station. But, you know, I hate that zoo format where every other link is supposed to be a joke and it's just not that funny. Mm. You know, I'm screaming and ah, 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 all that all the time. I can't stand that format. But um, I'd, I'd have, uh, well, I'd at the top of the list, of course, Tony Blackburn. Yeah. I'd have uh, the man you just mentioned. What was that again? Uh, was it Kenny Everett? It was. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenny Everett, no, the other yeah. one, Smooth Radio. Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, I remember him yeah. on LBC. He was excellent. He was, uh, he was, he was and it was. I, I have to say, um, he he's currently living in Los Angeles. Anthony Davis. I'm on his Twitter, and he was a fantastic trainer because he was very good at being approachable and training at the same time. Right. Because I I, I remember I remember working at the desk at the hospital. And I put on the Beatles, and there was a there was a there was quite a gap between the what, what we call the jingle and the next link. Oh, dead air! You must have dead air, dear. And and he and, and 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 thank God it wasn't being broadcast. And he and he tapped me on the shoulder and said, "I could have parked a bus in that gap." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Mustn't have dead air on the radio. It just sounds mad. It's like, yeah. you know, we could be talking like this and... Absolutely. It just sounds wrong, doesn't it? You've got to keep the noise coming out. Some it people say to me... I was... Um, we were... E- even, I was told when I was training that with some of the professional stations, you can't be... They, they, do, 
that they, they note if you're a second slow or half a second slow. Oh, I can believe that. There be some 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 bod will have invested in uh, in some software sometimes to to point out all your little errors all the time. And you know, th- this is the thing. You know, I I don't like everything perfect. Mm. I really don't. Why can't we have the odd mistake here and there? Why has everything got to be so blooming perfect all the time? Because I mean, when the they world, do, the world when isn't record, perfect. Yeah, yeah. When they record countdown, for example, they tend to do it so that. So that they leave, that they leave gaps, so that it looks live, you know, so that it looks flowing. Do they really? Oh, I didn't know. Yes. That. Have you seen that? Have you been to see it? No, I haven't been to see it. Oh. But um, Richard Stilgo, who who ran yeah. my college, um, well, the college I was at, rather, sorry, uh, he used to be on that, and so they recorded about twenty-four programs in one go. Wow! And, what and in one afternoon? Left. This is in the Richard White- Whiteley era. They deliberately left. Oh, sorry. Uh, you wouldn't yeah. have the same audience for that amount of time, would you? No, quite. Hang absolutely. on a minute. They don't have an audience, do they? Countdown. No, um, no, they don't. I, they, they, I, I don't know how many people they have in actually. It's currently Rachel Riley and Nick Hewitt, isn't it? I think. Is he the bloke from Apprentice? <clears throat> yes, he is. I quite like him. You know who else I like off The Apprentice? And I would like to have seen her have a show. Um, the the lady, she was in the first lot of The Apprentices. The lady who was opposite Nick. Who was that? What was her name? Um, so there, okay. there was Nick, there was Sir Alan Sugar, and there Alan was a, Sugar. another lady. Yeah, I, I can't remember offhand, actually. I can't remember what her name was, no. Yeah. I, um, but, 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 but I never, um, I, 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 I didn't, didn't really know Nick Hewitt prior to Countdown, funnily, funnily enough. Yeah. But, uh, I, I haven't seen very many live shows. No, no. I, I went to the... It's a long time since I've been there. I went to Television Centre. I saw Call My Bluff. And they, they do six in a row. They would do six in front of the same audience. And the first oh. one, second one's all right. Then you get the third one. Oh, oh, how many more are these doing? Then there's the fourth one. And by the sixth one, you couldn't wait to get out of there. <laughs> I was... <laughs> I can not quite imagine that. And of course, I, you know, in those days, it was very hot in the studio because you, there were no LED yeah. lights. So you had all these TV lights on, great mm. big massive cameras with with thick cables. The cable must have been about six or seven inches thick. Um, so yeah. there's one, one bloke moving the camera around, another bloke behind him, you know, feeding the wire through his hands. Now, I think the producer just sits up there with a little joystick moving things around automatically. It's all very yeah. clever, isn't it? <clears throat> Yeah, just 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 one quick final thought. I was uh, one thing I do suspect they record a lot of in in bulk because it's the entire concept of the sh- of the show is Bradley Walsh's new show, Cash Trapped. He's a catch for uh, catch tra- cash trapped. It? Have you seen that? Say it again. Cash trapped with with Bradley Walsh. It's cash a new trapped. Show. Cash is this trapped? Is this the thing on um? No, ITV. that's another thing he does, isn't it? On um, on ITV. Yes, it's the new one. Uh, basically, what was uh, he doing before? Uh, the chase. I remember the chase. So he's got a new yeah. one. There. Oh, I haven't seen that one. See, yeah, I he... think he's very, very natural. You yes, wouldn't he think he was acting. I don't think he is acting. That is him, and that's for me. Yeah. That works really well. It's when they're fake, and there's a lot of fakeness on the telly now, and I see it straight away. I can see it. <clears throat> uh, I've I've worked in certain places. Certain yeah. places, and I can see a, f- I can smell a fake from a mile off when they come up. Oh, how are you, Chris? And oh, it's lovely to see you. I say you don't, and I think to myself, you don't mean that. Why are you saying that when you don't mean that? Mm. Don't be mm. fake. <laughs> no, Bradley Walsh is very. He he reminds me of you a bit. He's got the same style of voice, and he's very very comical, and he's extremely spontaneous. I wouldn't mind being a quiz show host. Oh, or, me too. I'd love that. Oh, I'd like when I walk. I I like to bring the golden shot back. Do you oh, don't? Yes. How old are you? How old am I? Yeah, uh, thirty-eight. Oh, well, you wouldn't know the golden shot. Oh, that was a wonderful program. Basically, they were crossbows, okay? And you had targets yeah. in front of you. Some of them moving, and a bloke would come up and put a bolt in the crossbow, right? In the crossbow, he was called yeah. Bernie. So. Bob Monkhouse was the host, and he said, Bernie, the bolt, please. And Bernie would come up and put a bolt in this crossbow. Standing behind the crossbow, waiting to fire it, was, a, was, was, was one of the contestants. 
You know, they weren't trained in firearms or anything like that. And there they were behind a crossbow. And occasionally it went wrong. And this this bolt would go flying across the studio. <laughs> I mean, God I'm knows. That right now, actually. God knows why no one was ever killed on that show. But I like to bring that. I mean, you could make it. You could, of course, make it safer by not allowing the crossbow to move further. You know, you'd have something on there so it could only move, and you'd make sure there was no one in front of it. But there were occasions where, where for some reason, the bolt flew out of the of the thing and went flying across the studio. I remember that happening a couple of times. Oh yeah, and that was great. Uh, uh, op, um, the golden shot. <clears throat> Mm. Have a look on YouTube when, when I finish today, and I think you might find one or two of the programmes there, possibly in black and white, hosted by, first of all, Bob Monkhouse. Then there was that excellent um, uh, comedian, black comedian. Now, that, that was a thing. Okay, it doesn't mean anything to us now. It's just a comedian. But in those days, to have, like, a, a black person on the television, that was a wonderful thing, and he was excellent. Char Charlie... Charlie White? He was black. I think he was called Charlie White. Right. I, I, the name. The name doesn't ring a, ring a oh, bell with me. Oh, Charlie. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me look that up for you. Charlie. Um, Charlie, host of. I don't know if he's still with us anymore. Right. Charlie. Oh, there he is. Golden shot. Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams. Charlie Williams took it over. Um, but right. I don't think it worked too well for him for whatever reason. And Norman Vaughan, do you remember Norman Vaughan? I've I've heard of the name. Thin, the... thin, thin man, very thin, um, thin white man. So they were the three hosts. I think it was just those three, and it was it was real good entertainment. And halfway through, you'd have someone come and sing a song. Dare I say, one of them was Rolf Harris, who came on and and did um, I'm Jake the Peg. I remember do, him doing that on. Um, on the gold shot, I'm Jake the Peg, diddle, little little lum, with an extra leg, diddle, that one. He came yeah. on, I remember, remember him coming on the show and uh, doing that as well. So, yes, yeah, a great show. Would, what what um, quiz show would you like to host? What sort of thing would you like to do? Which one would I like to host? Um, I would be, uh, as a contestant, I would like to be on The Chase. And as a presenter, I would... I, I think um, I would like to, fun, funnily enough, I'd like to present Cash Traps, actually. So I'd be a, I'd be a contestant on the, on, the, on the chase and I'd be a presenter on Cash Trap. But I, I think it, in, I'd work, I think I'd work better as a team than a, as an individual, really. <laughs> right. OK. And I, oh. I, I also liked Bob's Full House, you know, the bingo. Yeah, I've bingo. heard of that. Or, um, or, or, or I might even want to be, a, I, I could argue with Anne Robinson on The Weakest Link. Actually. Anne Robinson, yes, I can see your hair. In your wheelchair, they'd have to build a ramp where the steps were for yes. you, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. I had to do the, I had to do the, the ramp of shame. As it, the uh, ramp of shame, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it, in, it incidentally, um, just quickly, they're bringing back the crystal maze. Yes. Oh, are they? When's that? Um, I think it's going to be next Friday. Or so, so very soon, it's starting anyway. Who's and doing also, that? Uh, just, just, just look it up. And also, um, I read somewhere, and I'm not joking, they're thinking of bringing back The Weakest Link. And uh, who's doing that? Anne Robinson. Oh, it's got to be Anne, hasn't it? Yeah. This is the thing, you know, you, you lose those original um, hosts. They comes back with someone else, and it doesn't quite work. But the thing that did work for Blankety Blank, because that had a few hosts. Um, Les Dawson, Terry Les Wogan. Dawson, Lily Savage, Terry Wogan. Lily Savage and... Oh, I had his name a second ago. It's gone now. Les Dawson. Dawson Les Wogan. Dawson. Les Dawson did it. Do you remember? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I remember. And that worked, didn't it? Now, I think that's coming back with someone else. But I can't remember who. Yeah. I have a feeling, and I think it's going to be on Channel 4 or 5. One of yeah. those two. Yeah. It was quite funny because both Les Dawson and the late Bruce Forsyth, his real name is Bruce Forsyth Johnson, both of them weren't were very good at interacting with with, with, with the contestants in a yeah. kind of joking... Oh, yeah. well, that's, that's what it's yeah. all about, you see. Yeah. Interacting with the contestants. Uh, Les yeah. Dawson, of course, passed away uh, some years ago now, I think it was. But 93. Some, some of the quiz show hosts, yeah. they just don't have that. Yet they're going through the motions, and but they're clearly reading out of an auto cue. 
Yeah. And I can tell. I can tell when it's fake. Yeah. I can absolutely tell when it's fake. If the conversation's not flowing, it's not flowing. Now, <clears throat> that's not to say that you can't have a conversation with anyone. And this is in general life. You know, I think, like, we're having a conversation now. This is flowing nicely, yeah? yeah. It's coming backwards and forwards. We are having a conversation. There might be someone who rings up at another time. And I've spoken, there are people that I speak to on the phone. And you're like, hello? And they're like, hello? And it doesn't flow. There's, there's, mm. it, it, there's something not missing there. There are people I talk, there's, there's two people, two people actually, who I speak on the phone, not very often to, and the conversation just does not flow. There's something missing there. I wonder what that is. Whether perhaps think you're too different or, or, or something like that. I, don't know. Yeah. I, I always think of conversations a bit like a tennis match. It's a bit like uh, I have the ball for a few seconds, you have it for a few seconds, and it just goes round and round and round and round. Oh, yeah. I, I, and if you can't throw that conversational ball, it doesn't work. It's the same metaphor, really. I think. Yeah, but it's got to be—it's yeah. got to be two way as well. For example, when I hear you start talking, I shut up, and I notice when you hear me start talking, you shut up. But sometimes it's—it's it's all kind of one way. Now, mm. you, you could argue. Well, what about you? You're sitting here in front of a microphone and you're talking non-stop for yourself. Yes, this is only because there's nothing coming back the other way. You know, some people have said to me before, when you're doing your show, you do go on a bit. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they say, well, you talk a lot. And I'm like, but it's a talk show. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And, and, and the answer to that is, yeah, but you know what I mean. No, I don't. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some people are funny, Rory. Why don't you do internet radio? Sorry? Why don't you do internet radio? I do. I, I, I oh. do. I, I, I do one from home occasionally with my friend Matt called M Music Comment. Is that uh, what station is that on? It's um. Well, well, we record it on a thing called Mix LR, um, but they're actually recorded broadcasts. There are a couple on my uh, Facebook if you want to have a look. Mix uh, LR, I, and you then you upload it, do you, or something? Yes. Mix yeah, LR. Yeah, I was going. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of doing one. Funnily enough, with Matt. Pop, pop, He's over with, with me on m Monday mornings. So maybe, maybe I'll do it then and send you a link. Yes, please do. Please yeah. do. So mix it up because I'm, I'm going to do a, a music and chat show soon. Uh, once a week, I've got three features. We're going to have the Manilo moment, of course. Sorry, the right. Manilo, Manilo magic. We're going to have the mirable moment. And we're going right. to have classical. I can't remember what, what I was going to call it now. I, I wrote it down somewhere classical classics or something like that so you know on the quarter of an hour so they're the three features and then me and me talking and playing songs in between so i'm going to do that once a week soon but um i haven't found anywhere to host it yet because you can't upload that directly to facebook they won't let you do that because of because of copyright on the music <clears throat> right uh, but if i went on a radio station then uh, possibly I could do it like that. I, I could send it actually to Upload Radio. They'd play it out, and then that would cover me for copyright, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what, what's the mirable, mirable moment? That's a, that's, a, that's a ballad. The ballad, oh. like uh, Whitney Houston. And I will always love you. <laughs> the original author of that was Dolly Parton, actually, in yes, 1974. Yes, yes, of course. Sometimes people do ask for the Dolly Parton version. I've got both of them when I'm doing my karaoke. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, I... really, that at the moment you can't get down to any of the karaokes. One of them's well, on I'm... a big stage and the other one, the one at the yeah. Camden Eye, that's, that gets very busy and the doorway is very narrow. I don't think you'd get your chair through the doorway, to be honest. That's true. I mean, I, it, it's funny because I'm currently doing karaoke at the Bunga Bunga Club in Battersea. And what they have is they have they they have the same format as as if you were on Britain's Got Talent. So oh, if right. you're so if you're if you're no good, they they buzz you off. It's part of the part of the game. Oh no, I couldn't be doing that uh, to people. I couldn't. Uh, there'd be no one on the stage. <laughs> I haven't been I haven't been buzzed off yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, some people they they do they do feel badly about themselves after they've sung a song. And I'm like, please never, ever feel badly. It is karaoke. It's yes. not a show in the West End. So, you know, yeah, you just sure. come here. I don't care whether you can sing or not. As long as you have a good time, 
then then I'm happy that you go away yeah. with a smile on your face. It was invented in Japan, actually. In, that's uh, right. Karaoke that's, itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Lovely to talk to you, my darling. Okay. And indeed, and indeed you, Chris. Thank R you for so much. Really is and nice, Roy. You carry yeah. on doing your show. That's it. I will. I'll, I'll send you the link and I'll see you soon. Okay, doke. Bye bye, Roy. Bye. -bye. There we are. Lovely, Roy, calling in uh, from Fulham there. All right. Uh, let's do some of your messages coming in. I've, I've kind of fallen behind a little bit with those <laughs> today while we're chatting away with him. Hang on, let me just bring those back up there. <clears throat> uh, there we are. One moment, please. Do, 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 do. Right. Where are we now? Gosh. Oh, blimey. Uh, I've missed all these messages. Just to... Here we go. There we are. Are you opening phone lines? Yes, the phone lines were open, Ray, just a moment ago. I'm sure you noticed that. Let's have a look. Uh, uh, uh. Good morning to Mari, who says, Good morning, Chris. I'm off to North Wales tomorrow for a caravan holiday. Oh, don't go in the pubs. They don't talk to you. They hate us. I was talking to a very, very nice uh, Welsh friend of mine. He comes along to the karaoke. His name's Alan. Young lad, very good looking. And he was saying, you know, that they're not keen on the English, but the people in North Wales hate the people from South Wales even more than they hate the English. <laughs> Isn't that strange? Aren't people funny? Dear me. <clears throat> Murray says, yes, you've had a big influence on me. Have I really? Knowing how much you love staying in a caravan. I do. I'm in one next weekend. I'm so excited. I'm so and all caravans are basically the same. But different. You'll see what I mean once you've been in a few. I find them very comfortable. I really do. Many years since I had a last caravan holiday. Just hope it doesn't rain too much. Is it really noisy in a caravan if you get heavy rain? Yes, it is. But it's nice. Mari, let me tell you. When you're in a caravan and it's pouring down with rain and you're in bed and you're nice and warm, there's, there's nothing better than that. I promise you, you'll love it. You will love it. Good morning to Christina. Joining us a little late this morning. Good morning, Christina. Uh, Colin's there. Morning, Colin. Um, Lewis is there. Morning, Lewis. Let's have a said. Uh, should have said. Ah, oh, thank you, Shania. Sh oh, I've, I've upset Shania now. I should have said all to servers, not all to boys. Oh, of course, that's changed now, hasn't it? Oh, my God. I mean, they're all up there, dear. We got all to boys, all to girls. What next? All to cats, all to dogs, all to goldfish, all up on the altar there, Shania. <laughs> Good morning to Ray Reynolds, who joins us this morning. Uh, and Ray Belasco wants to know is your window cleaner coming in today? No, it doesn't come every week, dear. I can't afford to have them done every week. You liked him, didn't you? <laughs> Not as much as me, mate. Uh, Ray Reynolds, Charlie Williams is uh, indeed dead. So he's we've lost Charlie Williams again some years ago, as we did the uh, 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 Les Dawson, who, uh, who Ro uh, Roy mentioned earlier. Uh, Ray says, a man called Jackie Ray, a Canadian, did the golden shot first. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't remember him. I don't remember him doing it. No, I don't. All right. So thank you very much for that. Uh, we do one more story. I've got a load of stories here, actually. To read out, um, it seems such a waste of stories, but I want to get going now because uh, it's swimming time. I have to get down that pool by half past eleven today because at twelve o'clock they have <clears throat> they have the ladies in to do the water aerobics, and the old waves get a bit you know a bit jumpy in there, and they're all running around like blue ass flies. They really are, so I try not to uh, do that. But uh, I'll leave you with this story today, and then we we'll do. The it's only one birthday this morning, actually. One, one tiny little birthday. Uh, this poor unlucky woman. This is in this morning's Daily Mirror. You see how I'm balancing it up here with lefty stories and righty stories. Got to balance it up, dear. <clears throat> unlucky, unlucky woman loses out on a scratch card prize. Then her day gets even worse. It says when punters buy lottery scratch cards, the dream, the dream is with any, to win anything from 50 quid up to a million pounds. Imagine that. Wow. You got your little card. <laughs> One million pounds. What would you do with that? Would it change your life? It wouldn't change my life. I'd still be here talking to you. The difference is I'd have some bloke working the cameras. I'd employ people, you know. I'd have a really, 
really pretty youngish man, sort of around about 30, sitting in the corner answering my phones. I push a button and he would go, yes, Chris, can I help you? <laughs> Is that homophobic? I hope so. Go on. Come on, girls. Oh, that's really sexist. Why won't you have a woman sitting in the corner? Because I don't want to look at a woman, dear. For four hours on end. I mean, I don't mind you popping into the show now and again, people. Shania, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you, Shania. If you're not sitting in the corner taking my phone calls, darling. Not when I can have a nice young 30-year-old man sitting there with tattoos. <laughs> Holy stupid people. Why? Why are people so stupid, Shania? They just don't get it, do they? Someone would have been offended by that last night. I know they would have because they just don't get it. They don't get anything, do they? Oh. And you wonder why I want to lock myself away in the middle of the highlands of Scotland for a week. Away from stupidity and idiots. <clears throat> Anyway, one unlucky lady, after revealing the hidden panel to find her card was a loser, threw it on the ground and ended up with an £80 fine. Good! How dare you throw rubbish on the ground? The woman was in Leicester on Tuesday evening about 7 o'clock when she chucked the scratch card on the ground. Members of Leicester City Council's eagle-eyed city warden team were nearby and she was caught red-handed, probably adding to the sense that her Tuesday was not her lucky day. Oh, well. They handed her an £80 fixed penalty notice and took a snap of the discarded card for evidence, later tweeting the news to warn others, well, good, don't chuck your rubbish on the floor. Serves her right. Aren't they disgusting? People who smoke and then flick the fag ends onto the ground like that. That is just awful. <clears throat> it says the, wor the, women, the people have been handing out a few fines in the Belgrave area. Following morning, they were back on patrol when they spotted another local resident breaking the rules and despoiling the environment. At 8 o'clock on Wednesday morning, they tweeted, fine issued to male court urinating in Cossington Park. Now, I've, I have an issue with that, actually. People urinating, whether it's women or men... There's no blooming public toilets anymore. What are we supposed to do? You go around... Do you know what? I'm not with my IBS, dear, which actually hasn't been a problem for a few months now. I haven't had a problem with the IBS for a few months. But you know what they're like? There's nowhere to go to the toilet anymore. So you have to go, you know, find a wall and go, go quickly go behind there or a bush. How can you find people for, going, for doing a human activity like that when they just can't hold it anymore, dear? God's sake. Good morning to lovely Maria. I just met a girl named Maria. I hope you're well, Maria. Shania says charming. Oh, Shania. I might give you a little job as well, answering my phone. I've got to win the million pounds first. Once I've won the million pounds, I will have... That's what, that's what I'll do. I'll have a studio on the Isle of Wight. I'll fly over there on a little, little light aircraft once a week and you can look after my studio there. Is that fair enough? Is that fair enough? Good. All right, let's do today's birthday. There's only one today and it's Nick. It's Nick Christie's. Christie, is it? I don't know how to say that. Is it Christie's? Nick Christie's today, who is 40. It says 49. Come on, Nick. Come on, mate. You must be in your 50s now. Happy birthday to Nick. He runs a very successful pub and now catering organisation. He used to drive a black cab. He's had a few uh, few jobs. Uh, they owned, uh, him and his wife, uh, Fiona, they owned a fish, shop, a fish and chip shop once in... Uh, e I think it was Ealing. It was kind of near, it was over Kew Bridge. What's on the other side? It is, is it, is it, is it you cross Kew Bridge and that's Ealing on the other side, is it? If it is, he, he, Ealing Hounslow sort of way, they used to have a, a fish shop, him and his wife there. Uh, then he went and drove a black cab for some time. Now, then he bought, they bought a pub and they're running a pub and from the pub they've started catering as well. So happy birthday to you, Nick. 49 years old today. So it says... I don't believe you're 49, but there we are. You look older than me on the picture anyway. <laughs> I'm pleased to say. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nick. Happy birthday 
to you. Have a nice time, Nick. Say hello to Fiona from me as well. Okay, my love. Uh, Maria, final message coming in this morning. Uh, Maria says, I hate gum being spat onto the floor as well. Aren't they disgusting? And it's on the floor. And then the men from the council have to come back with those jet washers. The jet washers. They're good, aren't they? Have you seen them? Getting up the chewing gum with that. I wonder if those jet washers could be used... <clears throat> If I ever get the constipation problem again. I know about the, um, what's that thing where they put the pipe in? Oh, what's that called? Colonic irrigation. But if I was to buy one of those jet washers, perhaps from Halfords or Argos, somewhere like that, and use that, could I clear my own constipation? There's a thought for you. Perhaps you'll come back with me with a message on the next show. Thank you very much for joining us on this Thursday morning. Have a wonderful day. I don't know what I'm doing tonight. I might be back with you tonight, actually. I might do Friday's show late tonight, sort of around 11, 11.30, something like that. So I may be back with you uh, tonight. If not, I'll see you on the next show. Have a wonderful day, and thank you very much for joining me this, uh, this morning, all right? See you soon. Bye-bye now. <laughs>